G'day folks. How you going? <laughs> it's not what you're expecting, is it? <laughs> you're probably expecting something a little bit more official, like, uh... Hi, I'm Robbie Alexander, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Robbie Fishing. Today, I'm going to be walking up a trout stream. That's right, folks, a nice small little stream chasing wild brown trout anywhere from 15 to 35 centimetres and maybe even beyond that if I'm lucky. That's a bit more official. Or I could just be me and say, G'day, folks. Today, I'm going to fish one of those little creeks up here. I love these little streams, as you know, and I'm chasing some brown trout. There may be a rainbow trout in here, but I haven't seen one here for a couple of years, so I'm... Uh, I wouldn't be totally surprised, but I would be shocked if that makes sense. It's a balmy afternoon. It's been raining. It's quite warm. There's a lot of frogs around. <coughs> There's even a frog in my throat, folks. And look at this. As you would expect, I'm using a Strike Tiger froglet. Why am I using the froglet? One, because there's frogs around. There's always frogs on these warm afternoons. I actually photographed some last night, as just before the storms hit. And two, because I've been catching a lot of trout on them this year. <laughs> They've been working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why change something that's already working? So I'm going to walk upstream. I'm going to start off with the Strike Tiger Froglet. If it doesn't work, I'll go to something different, like a bladed spinner or something. We had, in this area last night, there was half an inch to an inch of rain. So the water could be a little bit off colour. If the Strike Tiger doesn't work, I'll go to something a bit brighter if the water is off colour, or I'll go to a little minnow. Up in these mountain streams, particularly after stretches of warm weather, which we've just had, a fresh bit of rain can just put a bit of a fresh water in the system and can just really stir the trout up. The warm weather from recent days can make the trout move around a little bit more, looking for better areas, looking for deeper water to sit in, or moving upstream looking for cooler water, or looking for shadier areas. For whatever reason, the warmer weather can trigger the trout to just stop feeding and move around a little bit. But then the fresh rain, like what we've had here last night during the night, like I said, half an inch to an inch, that can trigger those fish that have been displaced due to the heat, that can trigger them to come out and go on a bit of a feeding frenzy. So if all goes to plan today, I'm going to go out and I'm going to catch heaps of trout in areas where I didn't catch any trout last week. <laughs> That's the plan. And we all know that plans can fall flat on their ass sometimes. <laughs> There's only one way to find out, is to go and try it. I'm using my wild bait stick today. I was going to use the Akuma. I've got a little Akuma rod in there. It's a five foot six rod and it's a ripper. But I like this wild bait, it's a little bit longer, it's six foot long, and because I'm using such a light jig head, I've started off here with this Strike Tiger soft plastic with an actual Strike Tiger jig head. Strike Tiger now have their own range of jig heads, and they're very, very light, and they've got a small gap because there's actually a bend in the hook, which brings the point of the hook down closer to the shank of the hook, if that makes sense. But long story short, because I'm going with a light jig head, I want to be able to hold my rod tip up high and just work it reasonably close to the surface. I'm using a froglet. It obviously mimics a frog. Frogs don't walk along the bottom. That's yabbies. Frogs swim across the top or they'll swim under the water. They'll swim through the water. They might swim down near the bottom here and there looking for little nymphs and stuff to feed on. But on the whole, they spend the majority of their time underwater near the surface or midstream. So I want a light jig head so that it doesn't sink too much. And I'm also using a longer rod so that I can hold it up a bit higher and just keep it off the bottom. And another benefit of a longer rod, there are some open stretches of water in this creek and the longer rod will allow me to just cast it further. Longer rods do that. On the downside, the shorter rod might come into its own and overgrown areas, but this section of the creek's not too bad. Anyway, it's so nice here. There's such fresh air. It's so quiet, there's nothing to be heard except the, the birds in the trees. I think I can even hear a bee hovering around a tree about 200 metres down there. It's just so magnificent. Beautiful fresh country air. The aromas of the native eucalypt tree down there, the aromas of the flowers are just wafting past my nose. It's just beautiful. Then there's the cow shit under me gumboot. <laughs> I'm in a cow paddock. I'm on private property. The farmer is absolutely wonderful. He lets me come on here. I come here at my own leisure. I don't even have to ring him and let him know I'm coming because he knows my car and he lets me on. And isn't that just great? And that's the benefit of knocking on the door and actually asking the farmer, hey mate, can I go fishing on your property? Then you can strike up a friendship and you can go there more often and you can do the right thing. Now, I respect this farmer a great deal. As a result, I don't name this location. I'm not going to even tell you the name of the farmer because he doesn't want heaps of people coming up through here fishing. It's only a small creek. It can't sustain a huge amount of pressure. And second to that, he doesn't want lots of people coming up here because there's always going to be that one or two dickheads that's going to leave the gate open or isn't going to go and ask permission. And then next thing you know, we're all locked out. 
So I'm going to look after this by keeping the name quiet, keeping the name of the... Some people will recognise it. That's okay. They already know it, obviously. But I'm not going to promote this area to people that don't already know the area because it's just, it's like, as I said, it can't sustain the fishing pressure and it's a respectful thing to do for the landholder. In a lot of my fishing reports, I talk about smaller waterways, tributaries and small creeks. I never actually name them and that's the reason why. Always happy to tell you how the fish are biting in the Ovens River or the Kiwa River or the King River. Always happy to help out. But in these little streams, sometimes they're better off to remain unnamed. Unless they're in the mountainous area with the heaps of trout, they can sustain a lot of pressure and it's not private property. Anyway, let's go and dodge the cows, dodge the cow shit, dodge the snakes, dodge the blackberries, kick a few echidnas out of the road and see if I can catch a trout. <laughs> and just one more thing, I haven't quite finished talking crap yet. This is the only time in this video you're going to see my mug in front of the camera because I'm wearing this. It's an action camera. It just makes it a bit easier for me to cover more water. I don't have to keep picking up a tripod or have somebody following me behind. Follow behind. I can just put that up on my head. Problem is, I've either got to walk with my head on an angle or all the picture ends up being on an angle or whatnot. <laughs> I don't know, but this is the camera I'm using. It's a Sony action camera. I've had this one since they very first come out. It's a few years old now. They've been outdated by a few models. I'll just put it on there, it's in high definition, I push record, then I go fishing. So hopefully you'll get to see me catch more fish, but you won't get to see me present in front of the camera, which is a real shame because I've just got such a wonderful uh, face and yeah, I'm born to be a presenter. As Rex Hunt says, I've got a good face for radio. <laughs> Got him. Look at that. He hit that like a brick. Just like bang. He really wanted that. And there we go. Well, the plan might work. The fresh water. The fresh water might just bring them out. And look at that. There is a lovely brown trout of around high 20s, maybe 28, 29 centimetres perhaps. I'm going to throw him back. You little ripper. Off to a good start. Second little pool I fished on the Strike Tiger Froglet, the one inch Froglet soft plastic. Got him. Oh, just in the middle of shooting a fly off my face. And this fella come out, not a bad fish either. Hello Mr. Brownie, you're a very nice fish. You're well over 30. A the 32, 33 centimetre marker I guess. Settle down buddy. Mate, the quicker you do this, the quicker you can swim free. The sooner you cooperate, have a look at that. A bit lean, a bit underweight. I reckon that could be a result of the recent heat wave that we've had. He might have just gone quiet, and perhaps this fresh water has just got him back out on the chew. But see ya buddy, quite a nice fish, put up a good fight. Hopefully you can eat some real frogs without hooks in them, and put on a bit of weight. A problem I don't have, I seem to find that quite easy to do. Oh, got him. Look at that. On the froglet. Oh, I lost him. Yeah, didn't hear one, well, so you hit it hard, but I had a funny feeling I was going to lose him. I saw the bow wave come down, then he hit it just as I was pulling it out of the water. And dirtier and dirtier as I speak, but something's just risen up there in the middle of the river, middle of the creek. See them rings? There's a fish feeding in here. Well, let's see how many casts it takes for it to see this froglet. I am sure that was a fish feeding in there then. If that wasn't a trout feeding in there, I will eat the froglet myself. Here it comes. Oh, he hit it. Oh, he hit it again. He hit it again and again. He wants it. He, he, he's still hitting it. He's just in there. See, that folks, it took me four casts, but eventually I knew that fish was there, and eventually, eventually he came out and hit it. He failed to hook up, but he saw it.
Right well, folks, I think it's time to change. I've caught two on the froglet and I've lost another one. And I've had a few other follows, but the water's just getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier as I stand here. Well, these are a known fish taker. A rooster tail in fluorescent colours. I might even go the next size up. Just because the water's so dirty, the bigger lure might just help displace a bit more water. And being brighter in colour, it will stand out more. And that's what I really need in this murky water. Something that will stand out a bit more. That's what I was using, the one inch Stry Tiger Froglet in olive pepper. See that? That's what's been doing the damage, but I just think this murky water isn't conducive to good soft plastic fishing. To a degree you'll catch them in murky water, but once it starts getting too dirty, I think it's important to put on something that displaces a lot more water. Something that's a bit more intrusive, so to speak. Yeah, see, look at that. The fish will see that coming from a mile away. Got him. Look at that. Ha! Took me a few casts, but... Look at the size of him. G'day, mate. You are the future of this wonderful little creek. Careful, I don't get a hook in my hand here. Yep, it's hooked in a way that I can get him out. He's got all three hooks in him, but he's only in the mouth. There you go, buddy. He is the future of this little creek. As I stated earlier, I had to take the little soft plastic off. Let's try a tiger froglet because the water's just getting a bit cloudy. And I know for a fact that he's getting dirtier because upstream where I was, it was hitting me like a brick wall. Just the, within a space of 30 or 40 metres, the water went from being like this to being filthy. So I've, because it's clouding over down here, I've moved downstream to stay ahead of the front, of the uh, flush. The water's cloudy, so I've changed this leery looking bladed spinner. The rooster tail. Now leery one of that. I'm giving that a go. Oh, gee whiz. How exciting was that? The moment this lure, this bladed spinner hit the water, a trout hit it so hard it actually pushed the spinner across the creek. It gave me a fright. I just went whack. Next thing you know, my spinner's three foot to the left. <laughs> but only did it give me a fright. I think it might have given the fish a fright. I don't think we'll be seeing him again. Yes, we will. He came back for another go. <laughs> oh, now he's got off anyway. <laughs> ah, go the rooster tail. Righto, this is the decider. I oh, know it's not. That's a wide. If umpire Dicky Bird was here, we'd call that a wide. Right, that's the decider. That's in the zone. Got him! Yes! Ha! I told you it was in the zone. Oh, come the puppy. Look at this, another little one. As soon as I took the soft plastic off and put the bladed spinner on, there's little fish start coming out of the woodwork. Isn't that funny? What a ripper of a brown trout. See ya, buddy. And this hole's got trout written all over it. Let that sink a little bit. Dirty water and flushes of dirty water like this tend to lead to trout feeding down deeper. A lot of worms and stuff wash down and tend to sink out of the current. And the trout seem to know this. Got him. Oh, I lost him. That might have even been a red fin, you know, the way it was fighting. I'm not even convinced that was a trout. If it was a red fin, with a bit of luck, we'll see it again. Whatever it was, there was a fish in this hole. That's a good sign. It means I'm not fishing in a fishless body of water. Nothing more annoying than when that happens. You fish in a body of water for a while and don't even see a fish. I think it might have been a trout. I haven't seen it again. It 
took a few casts before he made his presence known anyway. And even then he didn't hit the lure very hard. Got him. Well, maybe it was, oh, it was a redfin, you know. It was a bloody redfin. <laughs> Got him. And that's a trout, look. There we go. I could have sworn I hooked a redfin a minute ago, and now I hooked a trout. Not a bad little fish either. Come here, buddy. It's a nice trout of around 30 centimetres. Nice brown. Hang on, mate. Hang on, mate. Hang on. Okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're keen to go. There you go, buddy. Now you can go back. Look at that. Nice brown trout. There, mate. Now he's off. He's as happy as 10 trout. He's probably thinking, what the hell just happened? One minute there was a bright orange fish swimming towards me, the next minute I'm in someone's hand. And not just any old someone, it was someone with a bloody ugly face and a big beard. Had a head like a robber's dog.